question nine, uh, which is this pole with the cables. We're trying to find the tension in the brace cable, which is this one here. So if we look at this sketch, it's um, we've got to find a body that has three forces on it. <clears throat> this one doesn't have many bodies, so it's pretty easy to tell which one it is. It's the pole. Attached to this pole, we've got something here. So that's there's one here, which is our um, overhead cable. That's one point. We've got this brace cable. That's two. Now the third one uh, is easy to miss. But it's actually the ground. So the ground is a is a contact point. But what sort of contact point is that? It's not even a pivot joint. It's actually a, like a, a rigid joint. So um, it's definitely got absolutely no idea of the direction of the force there. If you were if you were trying to draw a force for what does the ground do to the pole, you got absolutely no idea because it could be any direction at all. All right, but this one. It's told to you already, so we know that the direction of, is the direction of this force. We've got the A degrees, we've got the, all this magnitude of the force, blah, blah, blah. So that's guaranteed. The, the weight of the pole is not taken into account, so we're not putting gravity here. The other one that we know, now I said, this one we've got no idea of the direction because it's a rigid joint, they're horrible. They've got way too many uh, unknowns about them, so forget that. But cables, the force in a cable has to be along the length of the cable. Cable can't push sideways or pull sideways. So therefore, this force must go along the length of the cable like that. What does that tell us? It tells us we found our intersection point right there. Okay. Therefore, our unknown force from the ground has to be at that same angle like that. So there's my intersection point. So we're going to do this in AutoCAD so we get actual numbers on these angles. But this is the principle of how we go about it. In all the three force principle questions, we're always looking for two forces, two forces of known direction. In this case, obviously, the input force and a cable because cables have we have direction told to us. All right, over to AutoCAD. I got a five meter cable. 60 degrees and B is 1893. So <clears throat> might do it in millimeters. Oops. Just getting rid of the previous question. Now I'm going to draw in white. White for my uh, AutoCAD drawing, white stands for millimeters. Because I'm drawing a millimeter sketch that's five meters tall at angle 270. So there's my pole. And B is 1893. And then 60 degrees will be um, 120. Right. <clears throat> now this force here, force F, is at angle 10.2 degrees down. 10.2 down from there. <clears throat> so from here, 180 minus 10.2, what's that? One, 169.8. If you don't trust your mathematics, you could just double check by if you were to do if I click on that line get properties it says uh, 190 oh that's haha -ha. it says 190 right why is that drawing utilities and then uh, give yourself like three decimal places on angle all right try it again so 190.2 <clears throat> so that's that's measuring down around this way. So it's 10.2 over 180. That's pretty good. That'll work. Or if you wanted another way to double check, you could reverse this line, which is a command. You can just say reverse. Now what the angle is, 10.2. So what I just did is I, instead of the line going from there to there, it now goes from there to there. But I'm going to reverse it back because it's supposed to go that way. It's pulling. 
All right. So uh, now it's time for our three body diagram um, trick. And what the trick is, is we've got to find three forces. So that's the wire force there, blue. This is my brace force, that's also blue. And there's a force, it's stay blue. Just going to switch to blue now. There's a force for the ground. So uh, attached to the bottom of the pole, there's a ground force, but we've got no idea of the direction, which is uh, what I just illustrated a second ago. Until we know where these are intersecting, now we can see that straight away because that needs to intersect into there. So we can just extend to that one, right click that one. This question has no, no information about the weight of the pole, so we can't use gravity. Yeah, if we did, that would be four forces because we'd have one, two, three is the ground, and then four the gravity, so we couldn't solve it. <clears throat> all right, now, that's my intersection point. I know that all forces for the pole must intersect at this point because there's three that have to be concurrent. So therefore, the ground force down here must also go through that point. So I've got three blue forces. All of them intersect at one spot. That's that one there. That's my concurrent point right there. Right. That is a sketch in millimetres, and that's really a three-body diagram. What we're going to do is solve this one by drawing a force polygon, and we have to start the force polygon with a known force so we get scale, because we've got no idea of the scale now. Right, so what do we know? Force F is 3,004 newtons. <clears throat> so force F is at that angle, but it's supposed to be 3,004. There's a couple of ways we could do that. We could draw a line 3,004 at that angle. So I'll just go 3,004 less than 190.2, enter. That's it. That's force number one. And I'm just going to draw myself a little circle to remind me where I started from, which is there. All right. Now we have two forces left, that one and that one. So I can copy one of these over. Doesn't really matter which way you put it on one end. The other force copy selection. Now this force doesn't have any choices about where I put it. I'm not allowed to put it here because this force doesn't have a length yet. We don't know how long it is. So this, this point doesn't actually exist yet. The only other point that's established is this one here because I, I know the length of this line is 3004. So therefore the both ends of it are validated already. All right, so there's my force polygon. I just need to um, use fillet to make a triangle out of it. Force polygon. Now, in this particular case, the force polygon and the millimeter sketch are fairly close in scale, which is a little bit unusual. Usually, there's, they're quite different, like these earlier ones. Look at the difference in scale there. <coughs> but there shouldn't be the same scale there. You don't take the length of that. That doesn't mean anything. That's millimeters. But this one, that's Newton's. So we've got a millimetre sketch and a Newton sketch. The only thing in common between the two is angle. So the whole point of the millimetre sketch, this one, is to get angle. Then you start a new sketch where you get Newton's from the question and draw everything up in Newton. So this is a Newton scale sketch. All right, so the question was asking brace cable. So we're just going to identify which one's the brace cable. That's the cable at this angle. If you if you can't guess, you just make a copy of it and move it over and you'll, you'll see which one it is. Oh, it's definitely that one there, see? <coughs> so that's the one. Brace cable, properties on that. Length is 9,017. So there's my answer. 9,017. Those were in Newtons. Check it. And we get a green tick, which is a 